Hey there, Boots Owen here. This is another Jewelet two slice toaster. I was given it by a friend. He told me it wasn't working. It's quite tarnished or corroded on the aluminium castings on the ends there. The cable looks okay. Bit of discoloration on top. The toast tray is just falling out. Up here we've got a model, two bread, 240 volt AC, 1370 watts, serial number 11 slash 95. Presumably that's when it was made. It was checked 8 out of 12, 8 out of 24. So presumably that's who made it or checked it. Jewelet, 16 to 28 Penarth Street, London, 1TU. 1TU. That's an interesting half postcode. A phone number and a fax number. 1995, no emails or anything like that, I guess. This one, oh, let's plug it in and see if it works. I was told it didn't work, but that doesn't mean it doesn't work. It might just have been grubby or something. People are funny about things sometimes, but maybe it doesn't work. Let's put it onto one slice. We've got a light, so that's half the battle. I'm not getting electrocuted. I can feel heat. I can hear crackling. It's the left hand side. I feel heat, I think, coming from both sides. I'm reluctant to stick my hand in the toaster. Yeah, I'll turn that switch over, see if we get a bit out on this side. Okay, let's turn it off. The timer will continue until it's done. I'll turn it off because I don't want the smoke alarm to go off. Right, let's get into it. What I would like to do is give this a clean up. Nothing more and nothing less. Something's rattling inside it. So let's get these screws out. The feet are held on with little screws. I'm gonna strip it down some of the way and give it a clean up. This foot here on the bottom it's noisy. This foot here in the bottom comes off and it's adjustable. And the screw is in beneath. For some reason, the sixth screw up here. There we go, that's better. This screw up here is a flat bladed screw. So that makes me think, has someone been in here before and lost the, uh, there, it's a little, it's not a self-tapper, it's just a machine screw. Has someone been in here and lost something? Lost the screws? Let's have a look, there's some mouldy crumbs there, gross, presumably toast, hopefully. Hopefully bread. Let's take a peek. It all looks... Fairly similar to any modern jewelet. So if I withdraw these two, or loosen these two nuts here and here, uh, that plate there should slide down. I'm conscious this might be hot. That should slide down, then I should be able to slide up. Once I've unscrewed the wires, I should be able to lift up the elements, get them out. I'm not sure how much cleaning I want to do. It would be good to take it apart. That would be good. Give it a clean. I could do a full strip down. I could do a partial strip down. I could take the aluminiums off the ends. I could start with that. Let's start with the, taking this stainless off the top here. Again, self tappers. Oh. would like to do really what would be cool for this one would be to strip it down and clean it and then spray paint the ends I think that would be pretty nifty you could paint them any color heat proof black is probably the best idea but I don't think they ever get that hot because they're such big pieces of aluminium they'll heat sink any major heat coming off it So 
So six screws hold on this top plate. That should lift off, yeah. It's pretty clean. Not too bad. I can see the toaster unit in there, and we've got a couple of screws here and here. Let's get these out and see what happens. So if I could leave the center intact and grubby as it is, because it's never you're never going to clean it, it's always going to remain rusty. Perhaps I could brush out the inside and scrub down all this where it's corroded here, all that white corrosion. If I could scrub that off, and that's pop riveted onto the center. So by taking out these remaining two screws, the sides should fall off. But the switch gear is all on the right, right hand side at the moment. Yeah, it's falling loose there. There's a lot of toast in there, old toast. So that does just slide off. Yeah, so I can give that a good scrub. That's a sheet of tin, heat shield presumably. Let's turn it back up this way. So pay attention. That neutral, oh dear. Right, take that off there and put that back on the switch on the timer. So the red from the center tap here goes to the switch, and the red to the end tap goes to the this switch over here. I guess actually, well, they could they could go to either. I suppose so. So there's your toaster unit. I need to put a note on that. Two neon. That'll do. I'm gonna give that a vacuum, I think. It's got original, by the looks of things, original jewelet. It says that they are dual of 230 volt, two end, original dualet elements. Bits of toast on that shield. So I can clean that off here. How would you get this off? There's a little black plastic thing here. It doesn't appear to do anything, it's just popped in. <laughs> that screw there is for an earth on the other side. You don't see that on the modern ones. I don't know why. I wonder is this guy here for a light on some models or something? I don't know. Switch is kind of loose, so I think it should pop off. If I get a screwdriver in underneath it. Yeah, it slides off. And it's got a couple of screws smaller than that. It could be tightened up, I presume. Don't really want to be tighter or looser in fact let's take them off to make it easier for me to clean it i can take off this earth It's got a clip. It's quite loose, but it's it's doing its job of restraining it. So this piece here has to pop out. Hmm. It has to pop back in, ideally. Or does it pop out? at first there we go okay 
what does that leave us? Just the switch. Brown to the center. in the sides, sliding it forward. Brown to the center. Okay. And then for this one, brown goes beside brown. Live, if you want to call it that, these don't want to come off. They don't have a connector on them. So live beside live. Turn that upside down. Prefer it that way. Okay, I'll give that a clean. I can give this a clean, I can give all these parts a clean, I can give this a vacuum and let it dry and reassemble it. Let's start by vacuuming this. Okay, I've cleaned them up. It's taken a while to dry, but they're dry now. There's still a degree of patination or discoloration. You can see kind of original here and then oxidized all around here. I cleaned it up with Scotch-Brite, which is, you know, pads like this. They're like fine sanding pads under running water. Did the job. So let's try to reassemble it. You might notice over here I've got another Jewelit toaster that I was pottering around on earlier on. It's a more modern one. A few differences. One is that it has this heat logo here that the uh, older one doesn't have. It has a different set of handles. Oh, shush. It has a different set of handles on the crumb tray. So the modern crumb trays have a plastic handle. This one just has a molded punch in the aluminium. The switch on this one, the newer one, has one or two. I don't know if that's just worn off the toaster, the older toaster or not. And what else? Anything else? It doesn't have that earth screw. It doesn't have that earth screw on the casting. Don't know why. This toaster could use a clean as well. Different plugs too. The older one has a molded plug. The modern one, bizarrely, counterintuitively in fact, has a screwed plug with a safety seal on it. Um, this is a separate plug and cut cable. This cable has heat damage, so I think I'll need to replace that. That's a different video. Maybe in the future. Right. This end here, cable in first. So we need to dismember this fellow. Blue and blue, brown and brown, that was what we said. It does have the remnants of one and two, so I'll try and put the two. It's hard to see, isn't it? The two is there, so I'll try and put it that way. That way up should make more sense. Okay. Blue with blue, brown with brown. Neutral and live. This went up with the pin pointing down for some reason. And it was held on with tiny screws, which have escaped. They really have escaped, where are they? There they 
there they are they're smaller than all the others so let's put that together and then i'll disconnect the cable run it through and clamp it in place i'd like this to tighten up so that it's not loose like before perfectly tight either. Try it a bit more. That's it, pretty good there. Okay, that's that. So, live and neutral as they were. This thing here, I'm not entirely sure, is it meant to snap in I think you meant to fit it to the cable and then push the cable through. I think that's how it's meant to go. So let's try that. So I don't see how you can do it other than before it goes in. And that's it. That's, just, that's it actually. I would say that's in upside down because I don't think I, I can't it doesn't matter it's not it's not very tight really but it is what it is neutral live okay earth this copper washer first then the earth come on then a washer then the nut this would be easier to do before the switch was in place but I didn't do that it's all coming apart Bit of magnetism and that screwdriver will benefit from it means as well that it's a steel screw steel washer and then hopefully enough driver can hold it on great so then we're ready to rebuild by the looks of things of this so where does the short cable go what did I say to neon short goes to neon okay so long which way does this go like this long live must go to here that's the output from the switch. Short live goes to the neon down here. Finally, come on, there you go. And neutral must go to the neutral, or blue must go to the neutral. Also on the output from the switch, if I turn it upside down, it'll be easier to reach. Tuck that cable under there. Get this neutral over to here now. Reach it easily, that's better. I could begin by putting in those two screws, I suppose. Do I have clean ones? Because they're a bit grim. So, in one of my many boxes of screws, I have similar screws. I'm hoping we'll get a purchase. I'm hoping. Yeah, I think they will. I think they will. They are zinc plated, which is the same as the ones that came out, but they're slightly different 
they're gripping up okay so far yeah and they're shiny which is what it's all about really Okay, then this side here should just drop down and push in. Now I'll put these in, but I won't tighten them up quite as hard. I seem to have just enough screws, bizarrely. I have lots of these gold or manganese coated ones. Might be manganese, I don't know if they are or not. I'm going to put these in, but leave them a little bit loose until I've got the top piece over. For the top piece you put, if I recall, you put the top screws on first. The top screws have holes, but the lower ones have slots. The other difference between this and the more modern toaster is that the slots are smaller. The slots on the older toaster are narrower. narrower than on the new one which is a bit weird but it is what it is now okay so push that in with my hand down and in so that it doesn't ride up over here one in likewise okay it's a little bit proud there but I think that's a feature of the toaster the newer toaster actually has a thicker bulb just a little bit than that now Loosen that and try and push it in a bit tighter, but I think it's gonna, yeah, it's springing back. So, the same over here. And then we'll get the toast drawer, the bottom on, the toast drawer in, or the crumb tray in, and check the operation. It's not bad for a toaster that's getting up on 30 years old. The knob's a bit tarnished there. A bit of polish would take that and tidy it up a bit, but well, I won't be doing that. It's already a lot cleaner. It's got this base on. So we've got the bottom on. I've given the feet a wipe, and I'm not too worried of whether these screws here are clean or not. That's the wrong way around. There we go. adjustable foot on the back corner these screws are slightly longer than the ones that are used to hold the top on so just remember that they're different and there's no issue I'll try and use the cleanest ones for these and I'm not going to put in that flat-headed one I'm going to put in one of the ones with the cross head because it seems a bit strange to me to have a flat-headed screw among all of these posi drive ones so put that in there and screw on this foot here okay model 2 bread looking a lot cleaner and swisher than before Let's plug it in and see if it gets hot. Let's turn it onto one toast. It's a bit wobbly there. I wish I could. Oh, wait a minute. That's better. I'm not 
not getting any earth leakage into my hand. So I can feel both sides of that heating up. And only the one side of that one heating up. Switch up. Oh, we lost the circuit there. Plug that out. Something went wrong there. So very strange. It popped the miniature circuit breaker. Let's try starting it on two. Let's plug it in. Ready? Oh. Okay, nothing now, but I have power up to the neon. So something strange is going on here. I'm gonna have to do a diagnosis. I wonder did I lose the fuse? Let's check. Mm. Let's check. 13 amp. Continuity. Yeah, I blew a fuse. Let's check a new one. Yeah, it sounds a lot better. It's working at all. Now, put that in, snap that back. Okay, nothing so far. It doesn't like that. There's something wrong there, obviously. Blown the miniature circuit breaker again. We would have blown, it's not a residual current device because if we had that, it would have tripped the lights as well. Okay, third time's a charm. I've got another fuse that I've just tested on the bench. Take this one out, see if I've popped this one, as well as the earth leakage. Oh, the, fuse, the fuse that I've put in is okay, so those two fuses, they should be okay. Let's have a look underneath again. Something's wrong. Something's getting pinched or short-circuiting somewhere. I'm disconnected from the power, I'll take out these screws. Okay, screws out, let's have a look. Something's not quite right on... The second circuit, which is this one. Not entirely sure why. It all looks okay. What I would say is that red line there on the live is very close to the one below for whatever reason. I don't know why that's fallen down. I don't want to keep blowing fuses, that would be wasteful. I need to put something into it. In there, right. Before I plug it in, let's just check and see what's going on. Well, I could do it with the power on, actually. I prefer that sometimes. I can do it with continuity. Okay. You'll hear the beep, anyways. So from live, let's try and work our way through it. I've got live on the plug, I believe. If I could, if I could hold it. There we go, live on the plug to here. Um, why would that be live over there then? Why am I getting continuity through the live? Which one is the mains? The mains is coming in below, so, th so that one on top really shouldn't have been live there a minute ago. Okay. Try neutral to here. Okay, neutral above. Let's just check that live again above. It's a bit weird that it was beeping for me before. Okay, that's better. I'll just check the earth for fun. Yeah, okay. So if I turn the timer, we should get live through, through the switch. Okay, and neutral. Right. Uh, we should have neutral down here the whole time as well. Yeah. And we should have live to down here now that it's turned on. If I could reach in. You can't see. Barely I can see here. Yeah. And we're on one slice, so we shouldn't have anything coming out to here. And we don't. But if we turn on two slices... Why are we not getting anything to here? So we're getting live to there. 
Hmm, let's check this live out with the other switch on. Neutral's right, there's no live to hear. Something's a bit iffy on that switch, I would say, in that case. Let's pull the switch out again and have a look at it. Now, how am I gonna do that? With the screwdriver, maybe. to open it you see so I'm trying to squeeze it out from the inside I'm making good progress actually there we go that's it here's the switch it's all a bit tight not great pull that thread there a bit tighter so we've got blue brown um, so the lamp is here, so live to the centre, neutral to the lamp, and live over there. Does that look correct to you? The bottom of it looks a bit cracked. No, I don't know, that might be moulding. No, it's definitely cracked. Okay. So we're now, if we want the switch that says one and two, we're into a world of pain because they're expensive. Some little screwdriver. Let's get in here and see what these contacts look like. I'm doing it again on the other side. It's just clicked shut. That, that plastic is broken off there, I can see. Here we go. So I'm not sure where that spring is meant to go. I think that's a contact to the neutral for the neon. No. Let's see now. Yeah, the neon's in the thing. I wonder if I've connected it incorrectly. Suspect to have, you know. Suspect I've put it back together with the neutral on the wrong side. So what do I think was happening there? Well, my suspicion is that I put the live and the neutral on the wrong ends. And whenever I switched it from one to two, it was joining live and neutral together. I think that's what was happening. I'm not sure, but I think that's what was happening. So if you know different, tell me in the comments below. Just give that a clean. Oh, that switch is broken. No good. So what are we gonna do here then? Let's try and revive it for now. I've lost one of the arms, that little bit of red. A little bit of red plastic there fell off. That's less than splendid. I'll go and see if I have a similar neon switch out in the garage. So I went out to the garage and tried to pull switches. I've got a red one, a rocker, with some kind of a plastic thing attached. A lot of these, I'd say, that's the original. A lot of these will have come out of vacuum cleaners. There's a plain black one. Another plain black, made by RS. Red with a neon, or black with a neon, that's what I mean. Again, and again, three of those. they're all adequate they all have 16 amps on them but i found this one 10 amp which is adequate swan and it has one and two so that would make the most sense but of course it doesn't have the thing for the neon so i'll need to somehow fold up that wire or tricky but it should be possible to just run it without the neon which is okay you know so i can't see what i'm doing here now 
I'm gonna have to do it like this, I think. Of course, I could take it apart again, but you know, I don't want to do that. So this is the this is the neutral here. I'm gonna have to disconnect that, I guess. And what have I got? Live and live and live. So I've only got two lives, and there's no neon, so I can just attach them any way around, really. And I don't. I suspect this one should snap in here. It's it's completely wrong in terms of looks, but it should get us out. So I think I'm not entirely sure. I think I think I had it on that. In fact, I don't know what way I really had it attached. Let's try that. Does that snap in there? It does, but it's not quite right. Look at that. There, it actually is fitting pretty good. Do you know what? It would really be better if it was the other way around. Mm. It's going to be hard to get out now. That's it. If I turned it the other way around, you see. would make more sense because it does the slice of the single slice first on the left it looks wrong but uh, it's hilarious okay this one uh, I can remove this cable completely from here and just put this straight through so there's no neon now let's try it without the base attached I'm pretty sure I could buy a replacement switch, but I want to test it first. So let's try this. Hopefully the lights will stay off on. I have no neon now, and I don't have a neon. I'm not getting electrocuted. I can hear it crackling. And yeah, I don't feel any heat on the extreme right hand side. Kind of reluctant to touch anything now. That switch is on. Yeah, and we're getting a bit more heat out of it. So I could price up one of these. C five four zero eight AT, and that's it. But uh, I'm not sure that I will because I'll never find another use as appropriate as that for this switch one and two. So I'd rather leave that in. It's 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 not going to come off. It's well embedded. That's perfect. So I think that's it for this toaster. I'd rather like I could I could, but it would be the same thing. As it stands, I've got a spare piece of cable wherever I left that, and uh, these wires are live. So let's plug it out. I'm waffling on with the camera. So I've got a spare piece of cable. Let's put the bottom back on. I'm happy with that. Ultimately. I'm not sure why that happened. I don't know that I had the wires on the wrong way around. I, I'm not sure, but one way or the other, that switch was cracked and I've lost the rocker on it now. So could I give a summary for this video? I cleaned the toaster and then broke the switch. I have a feeling that switch was probably ropey before and I just didn't see it at the start because uh, I was told that there was something wrong with the machine. But there we go. As far as I'm concerned now, we've got a working machine, albeit with the wrong switch, but nice and clean. So I'm going to put this into my stores and probably just keep it for myself. It's got good elements. It's got a good timer. It's got a good switch. It works. So it's a good toaster. Let me know what you think. As far as I'm concerned, I could sell it. I don't like selling appliances. Um, I'm not an electrician, although you don't need to be an electrician to repair a toaster. I don't, I don't think there's any rules on that in the UK. You just need to have some level of competence, and competence is probably bound by pat testing things nowadays, but I don't have a pat tester, so we're not going there. Do let make a nice set of repairable things, and their parts are very expensive. I have a feeling we're up like 15 quid for a switch. I know the elements, a set of elements would be 20 or 30 quid for this toaster. So we're not looking at that. Where's that crumb drawer gone? Crumb tray, let's put that in. I think it's nice to fix things. It's nice to keep them going. 
this one's a bit dull compared to, for instance, this more modern one over here. It's a bit shinier. But the reality is, it works just fine. It would be ideal in a builder's a builder's tea cabin or something like that. It would toast all day long. Right. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. If you want more videos like this, uh, a like would be appreciated. Uh, any observations or comments, please stick them down below because they're useful for me, especially in terms of learning about things like this. Somebody pointed out to me in a different comment on a different video about that adjustable foot. I hadn't twigged that that's what was going on there on a different toaster. I think it was my own one. I've made a few videos about Jewelet toasters and replacing the elements and just looking through them generally. And I think they're wonderful. <laughs> I think it's nice that things can be repaired. They're up there in my esteem with Henry's. Henry the vacuum cleaner. So thank you very much for watching. See you later.